Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our tack cleaning series for the week. Today we're gonna to be talking about cleaning your bridle and bit, so stick around. If you didn't get a chance to catch my last video where I showed you how I clean my saddle, I will leave the link up above so you can click on that. But we're basically going to follow the same exact pattern. So you're going to need a lot of the same tools, a bowl or a bucket of lukewarm water, um, some saddle soap of choice, some leather conditioner of choice. I've got two clean sponges here and a toothbrush to get into the nooks and crannies and also to clean your bit. So this is a big one. You are also going to need a clean towel and a clean rag as well. And you also need a really dirty bridle like what I have. <laughs> this is my bit pre-cleaning and you can see it's pretty grody. It's got a lot of grass and slobber all over it. So that's what I'm going to be cleaning off or probably scraping off. You can see just how yucky my bridle is as well. I am really horrible about taking a ride and then just tossing my bridle back into the bridle bag instead of actually wiping it down and, you know, it is what it is. I think every equestrian has that mentality. First things first, I'm gonna deconstruct my entire bridle. So I'm gonna take my reins off, I'm gonna take off my bit. That way I can get into the little nooks and crannies and actually give this thing a good cleaning. And if your bridle is like mine, um, Tino really foams a lot at the mouth whenever he's taking the contact. He likes to mess with his bit a lot. And I am really horrible about just, I mean, I give it a quick wipe with a paper towel, his bit, but I always just kind of throw it back into my bridle bag, which is really not good for it. But the leather over time, because I do that, gets really hard to um, take the reins and stuff off when I just want to use my bit. Or if I want to change my bit or whatever, it's the leather gets really hard. So it really needs a good cleaning and it really needs uh, some conditioner because it is not very supple. A bit is off. Um, so I'm gonna set this aside so that I can scrub it with my toothbrush later because it is really grimy. So I'm gonna give it a good cleaning as well. Word of advice, when you're doing this, don't do it on your dining room table. <laughs> All right, so I've got my reins are off, my cavison and everything is off. I'm not gonna take these two bits apart from each other because I know I would have a really hard time getting it back together. It's really not that difficult, I'm sure, but I just don't want to. But if you really want to give your bridle a good cleaning, deconstruct it as much as you can because dirt kind of hides into those little spots that we don't tend to clean very often. So do what you wish, but for me tonight, I am not going to take this apart. Basically, we're gonna follow the exact same instructions that I used for how to clean my saddle. So I'm gonna start out with a very damp cloth to wipe all of the excess dirt and grass that has somehow gotten stuck on here and hair and all of that stuff. You wanna remove that before you apply the saddle soap and the leather conditioner because you don't wanna add an extra layer of dirt on top of your dirt, if that makes sense. If you just apply your saddle soap and your leather conditioner on top of a piece of leather that you haven't actually cleaned the excess dirt and stuff off of, you're just creating a layer of stuff over top of the dirt. So you wanna remove that first. Leather and water do not go together very well in excess. So just like in my last video, I'm going to stress damp cloth only. 
uh, just to wipe everything down or what I would call to rinse things off whenever you've applied the saddle soap. So first thing I'm gonna do is get my rag damp and I'm gonna wipe off all of the extra dirt and all that good stuff before I do anything else. And this is exactly the reason why you want to wipe stuff off before you do anything else because that is a lot of dirt. I like to pay extra attention to the little parts of my reins that actually come in contact with my bit because slobber and stuff gets all over this and I mean, it probably gets more dirty than any other part of your reins. So just pay extra close attention to this part getting um, stuff cleaned up. My least favorite part of cleaning a bridle is the reins because these braids are such a pain in the neck. They really are <laughs> like trying to get someone, I mean, you can't really get under them, but it's just such a pain. It takes so long. If you feel my pain, let me know down below. Next part of the tack cleaning business is to apply your saddle soap, which you're gonna do with a damp, clean sponge. Again, damp. So you're just gonna get your sponge damp. <laughs> with your damp sponge, you're just gonna get a little bit of saddle soap on there. And you're gonna apply it. And I, just however you can. When I'm working on my saddle, I like to work in a circular motion so that the soap gets into the leather. And I like to work in sections. And I'll do the same thing with my bridle. So I'll work on the cavison part first, and then I'll rinse it off, and then I'll move on to the next part, and then I'll rinse it off. Again, when I say rinse, I don't mean to stick your bridle into like a, a bowl of water. <laughs> You're just gonna use a damp cloth to pull the soap off, rinse it off, pull it off. Um, so always use damp anything on your leather. You don't wanna douse it, that is not good. So just a little bit. One other thing that you want to be mindful of is that you wanna get the top and bottom side of your bridle. You don't wanna just clean the top part. The top part is for pretty, obviously that's the part that everybody sees, but the bottom part is what actually touches your horse's face. And if you've got an excess buildup of sweat and dirt and hair and all that stuff that's touching your horse's face, that's gonna hurt over time. So you, you wanna get that stuff off. So do the top and the bottom. Now I've got my damp rag that I'm gonna just run it across my cavison where I've applied my saddle soap to take the soap off. And I'm gonna say the same thing as I did with my saddle. Um, leather is very porous, just like your hair. So if you leave saddle soap on your bridle, it's just gonna attract more dirt. So just as if you were shampooing your hair and you didn't rinse it all out, it feels really grimy and gross after, that's exactly how your leather's gonna feel. So you wanna get the soap off before you apply your leather conditioner. Anywhere you've applied what you feel like looks like too much water, maybe your rag was a little bit more sopping wet than you realized that it was, that's why it's handy to have the clean dry towel next to you, that way you can just towel dry it off a little bit. Cavison and headstall are clean with the saddle soap. And now I'm just gonna move on to my reins, which I'm not looking forward to. <sighs> clean reins, the best. All right, for our last little part, we're gonna put the saddle soap away. And we're gonna pull out our leather conditioner. I have this Absorbing Horseman's One Step. Um, it's just something that I got at TSE. Same thing goes with my saddle soap. It's Feeblings? Feebings? 
fivings? I have no idea, but this is always what I've used. And it's good stuff for any kind of leather products. So both of these I got at TSC. Um, I'll put the links down below. You can also get them on Amazon. So I'll leave the links down below for that. So we're gonna pull out our leather conditioner and a clean sponge, which you don't have to get damp this time. Um, you're just gonna stick it in there and work it into your leather. Same thing with the leather conditioner as for the water or the soap. A little goes a long way. You don't have to use a ton of it, just enough to actually work it into the leather and make your leather supple and soft. If you do actually put too much on, just use a clean dry towel to wipe the excess off because this is not something that you rinse off, you leave it on your tack. With the conditioner, really, again, the places that um, see the most action or um, like this part where my reins actually um, buckle together, uh, that sees a lot of wear and tear. So just that's that type of area that you really want to get into and condition. Same for the leather conditioner as with the soap. Just make sure you get both sides. Don't just get one side. rain down and last but not least before I clean my bit I'm going to condition my head stall and capstan super quick okay this beauty is finished Whee! so on to cleaning my bit and then I am done I'm not sure about you but I do not like the taste of soap and dirt so I went ahead and washed my bowl and filled it up with some clean fresh warm water to soak my bit in. I have not been diligent about cleaning my bit after every ride. Some people do that. I probably should. I do wipe it off with a paper towel because like I said earlier Tino does get really frothy sometimes. So I do try to wipe it off in between rides before I stick it in the bag, but it's still all wet and grody. So because of that, there's a lot of stuff that's really stuck on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to soak my bit for just a few minutes. You don't wanna let your bit soak for too long in your bowl of warm water, just for a few minutes. It is made of metal, so you don't want it to rust. So just leave it in there for a few minutes, just long enough for the crusties to get soft so it's easier to scrub off with a toothbrush. All right, it's been about five minutes since I've started soaking my bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. I did go ahead and put a tablespoon of distilled white vinegar in with my water just because it's got natural antibacterial properties. And I wanna get all the help that I can. <laughs> it's pretty gross. So I'm just gonna, oh yeah, it comes off pretty well. Thank goodness, I thought that was gonna be really hard. <laughs> That's a lot of yucky. You wanna make sure that you pay attention to these jointed parts and this is the perfect time to actually inspect your bit and make sure that there's no sharp stuff sticking out or rust or anything like that. If for some reason you do have a little bit of rust, you can take a wire brush to this. Just make sure that you clean it really well after. Um, you don't want a wire brush bristle sticking in your horse's mouth. That would be no bueno. And I've got a beautifully clean bit. Yay! Once you get all the crusties off, make sure that you go over your bit with a clean dry towel or a clean uh, dry cloth just so that you don't have any wet parts that are gonna rust later. If for some reason you do have crusties that refuse to come off, you can use uh, baking soda on your bit. <clears throat> That's a natural product that isn't gonna harm your horse. Fun tip, baking soda and vinegar react with each other to create a bubbly, almost kind of like an effervescent type um, phenomenon. So if you have crusties that absolutely refuse to come off, hit it with a little baking soda and then pour a little bit of vinegar on it and let it sit for a minute and then scrub it with a toothbrush and then rinse it off. Some people polish their bit. I don't do that, but I know there are a lot of products on the market where if you wanna make it more um, enjoyable for your horse, there's bit wipes that you can try in different flavors. I've made my own peppermint bit wipes and Tino loves them. 
And most of the time if I wipe my bit down after we're done writing, that's what I do wipe it down with, but I'm not super diligent about it. So um, that is something that is out there if you'd like to try it. I know for the longest time, Tino would not take a bit for me very well at all. And it got to the point where it was really annoying. <laughs> So between trying the bit wipes so that the taste was a lot more enjoyable for him and also using a bit warmer to warm the bit up because he is a spoiled little brat, um, he now takes the bit just fine. He practically opens his mouth to take it. So as long as it tastes like peppermint and it's warm, he'll take it no problem. So there are products like that out there on the market. If you wanna know what kind of bit warmer I use, I'll leave the description down below. I do make my own bit wipes, so if that's something that you're interested in seeing, I can make a video about that. And that's it for today, so stick around for Saturday. I'm gonna be going over how to clean your stirrup irons and leathers, so stay tuned for that. Happy writing. Man, I wish there was a quicker way to put this together. I'll wait a minute.